talk will be given by Alida uh, Catron. He will tell us about geographic QCD axiom. Please, 45 minutes as usual. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let me thank uh, the organizer uh, for uh, setting up such uh, a nice event. Uh, my talk will be based on this uh, uh, model of holographic QCD action, axiom. Sorry. Um, I will uh, speak about some results containing two papers and some work in progress. And this is a list of uh, uh, collaborators, uh, various collaborators in these two papers, Francesco Bigazzi, our very good student, Alessio Caddell, Paolo Di Vecchia, you all know him, uh, and then Matti Jarvin and Elias Kiritsis, who already gave a talk uh, in, this, um, in this conference. Andrea Marzola is a postdoc in Centro Atomico di Bariloche, and uh, Angel Paredes. So the plan of the talk is the following. Since I'm going to speak about the axion, I will start by uh, recalling what is the strong CP problem and why the axion is a, such a, uh, an appealing solution of the problem. And then I will intro, well, uh, make a quick review of, the, um, of what's known as holographic QCD or the Witt and Sakai Sugimoto model because uh, the uh, axion model that I will present is based on that uh, construction. <clears throat> Concerning the applications of this model, uh, I will concentrate mainly on the couplings of the axion with matter, and specifically on uh, some par very particular uh, coupling, these p odd couplings uh, to nucleons for the reasons that I will explain in due time. And then depending on uh, how I make with time, I will spend a few words on the, the confined phase of the theory and uh, on ongoing work on the calculation of gravitational wave spectra in this model and similar models. Okay, so let me start uh, uh, by recalling what is the strong CP problem. Here I wrote down the Ian Mills Lagrangian in Euclidean signature. The theta parameter is here is the code it's a, it's a parameter of the theory multiplying the, uh, this uh, FF tilde term, which breaks CP. Uh, actually, whenever in the, in the theory you have massive quarks, only massive quarks, as in real world QCD, the theta parameter is not just theta, but it's this combination theta bar of theta with the argument of the determinant of the quark mass matrix, which I will call uh, the note as uh, M. Um, of course, all the, the quarks must be mass, massive in this case. Otherwise, uh, if you just have just one massless quark, the kind of rotation corresponds to a shift of theta. So theta is basically non-physical. So the theory is equivalent of, to having theta equals zero. But in the real world, it's not uh, the case. So theta is in principle a parameter of your theory. In principle, a priori, you might expect it to be uh, whatever number, but of order one. And instead, uh, the strong CP problem is consists in the fact that experimentally, the value of this parameter is incredibly small, is like smaller than 10 to the minus 10. If you uh, consider that is, it is the sum of two terms which have a very different origin, because one is from the strong sector, and the other one is basically uh, due to the uh, electroweak sector, uh, the smallness of this parameter is, uh, uh, is uh, very odd. It cries for a, a theoretical explanation. So the Pechequin mechanism and the axion, uh, which comes out from the mechanism, is a very elegant solution of this uh, strong CP problem. It postulates that there is uh, uh, an extra global U1 symmetry, which I'll denote uh, U1 PQ. PQ stands for Pechequin, of course. And the symmetry must be spontaneously broken, such that you have a Goldstone boson, which is the, the axion. And uh, the symmetry must be also anomalous in order to couple to FF tilde. Um, so that in the Lagrangian, apart from uh, derivative uh, couplings of the axion, you will be, have a, a term which is a multiplying FF tilde, which is a combination of theta with the axion, actually. And this uh, FA is uh, the axion decay constant, so the equivalent of uh, the phi decay constant for the axion, setting the, basically the energy scale for the typical physics of the axion in the ultraviolet. 
So whenever you have this term, uh, uh, and if this is the leading term uh, breaking CP in your theory, Peche and Quinn argue that uh, the vacuum expectation value of the axion here exactly cancel uh, the theta term, solving in a dynamical way the strong CP problem. On top of solving the strong CP problem, the axion uh, could be also uh, a very good candidate for dark matter. In this case, uh, FA is required to be uh, quite large. Here I reported a possible window, well, actually the largest window of uh, possible values of FA, but uh, you can think about uh, 10 to the, to the 12 GeV as a benchmark value. In this case, FA is very large, so the coupling of the axion are very small, and we are in the invisible axion scenario. Okay, so it's a very light particle, very weakly interacting, it can be um, dark matter. And this is the reason why there are a number of experiments going on, uh, trying to measure, trying to detect this particle. Okay. So our interest uh, has been to um, embed uh, uh, an axion model uh, in uh, holographic QCD. So let me review in one slide uh, what is known uh, as holographic QCD, which is the Witt and Sakai Sugimoto models. That is the Sakai Sugimoto model, which is based on Witten's background. So the construction starts from uh, NCD4 brains wrapped on a circle in type 2A string theory. Uh, on the circle, there are supersymmetry breaking boundary conditions so that at low energy, the world volume theory is a four dimensional SUN, uh, SUNC Yam means theory. Okay. Uh, in a certain regime of parameter, which is the usual one that uh, we study uh, biography, that is the large number of colors and large tooth coupling, the theory has a dual description in terms of a metric background in type 2A. Here I wrote them just the metric, they are also dealt on a core form uh, for the Ramon Ramon field. And the important part of this metric uh, is uh, the one coming from uh, the, this combination of the radius, which is called U typically in the literature, and this circle X4. Here I depicted it uh, on the left side. Uh, it has the shape uh, and the topology of a cigar. So the, the circle shrinks smoothly at a certain radial position, which I call U0, okay? And which basically sets the dynamical generated scale of the dual tree theory. And uh, in order to complete the range of parameters that uh, uh, characterize the model, uh, the theta parameter is given by the integral on the circle of the uh, Ramon Ramon one form C1 taken at infinity. And this you can understand by uh, considering the coupling of a probe D4 brain wrapped uh, on the circle, which has a coupling of, uh, C, of the type C1 wedge F wedge F. Okay, so that we immediately, immediately realize that the integral of C1 is dual to the theta parameter. On this background, well, uh, just a word, of caution here because uh, as usual in holographic models when you are in this regime of parameter where you can study the theory uh, in the dual gravitational setup, the theory is not pure Yam Mills but it's coupled to a tower of Kaluza Klein mode. So the theory is expected to be in the same universality class of pure Yam Mills and pure QCD or, or and QCD uh, when you add quarks, but it has uh, it is coupled to uh, spurious matter, let's say. Okay, in this background, Sakai Sugimoto added uh, a number of probe D8 brains. Uh, in the most simple uh, scenario, the uh, end point, th these are here are depicted as a blue curve, the D8 brains. Um, they are placed at antipodal points on the circle, in the most uh, simple scenario. And why the D8 brains? Well, because just because from the, sp the spectrum of the strings connecting the D4 brains and the D8 brains, you find out that uh, at low energy are just uh, quarks, okay? So the model at low energy reduced to uh, planar uh, QCD coupled to this uh, spurious matter, okay? Now, when you go and solve the equation of motion from the DBI action, you discover that the D8 brain and D8 and anti D8 brains smoothly join at the tip of the cigar, realizing geometrically chiral symmetry breaking. Um, and uh, 
you can make a better call, even better contact with the real world QCD by introducing a mass for uh, these uh, quarks, uh, by introducing uh, um, worksheet instantons hanging uh, in between the branches of these D8 brains. It was pointed out in 2008 uh, in these two papers. <clears throat> okay, so this is a flash of uh, the, uh, this can be done uh, in the limit where the masses are very small, the masses of the quarks. Okay, so we are considering uh, the light quarks uh, only. This is uh, the flash of the uh, review of the holographic QCD model. And then since uh, we are interested in, okay, in the QCD action, in my task, whether you can in, uh, embed in such a model, which is a, has been very successful in describing uh, qualitatively, also quantitatively to some extent, a lot of properties of low energy QCD. So you want to embed uh, uh, an axiom model in this, uh, in this theory. Of course it can be done um, and it can be done uh, in a very uh, extremely simple way actually. All you need to do is to add an extra uh, pair of uh, D8 anti D8 brains in the probe approximation. You want to add it uh, such that the endpoints of the D8 brain uh, will, um, are not placed at antipodal points on the circle. So <clears throat> Uh, the DBI action, the equation of motion, uh, dictate anyway that uh, this D8 uh, uh, anti D8 brain joins smoothly at some point, uh, which is uh, whose radial position I denote you here as a U PQ. PQ, of course, stands for the shaping. Um, so you still have chiral symmetry breaking for this extra flavor that you have introduced. And uh, the basic point uh, is that uh, um, in this type uh, of models, in the Sakai Sugimoto model, if you place uh, this uh, extra flavor no, at non-antipodal point, it doesn't correspond to adding a mass to your uh, quarks. In fact, the mass uh, is introduced by this worksheet instantons. And in fact, the extra flavor that you have introduced by, with this operation is uh, massless. And as such, you have no strong CP problem at all in the theory. Okay, it's uh, automatically solved because you have a massless quark in the theory. The construction realizes uh, the Pechequin mechanism in a very uh, simple way. The uh, Pechequin uh, symmetry is just the axial symmetry of this extra flavor, which is, of course, it's anomalous and spontaneously broken because this extra flavor has condensate. Okay, the condensation is the, in the dual. Uh, uh, in the dual description is just dictated by the geometry, okay? The basic point here is the following. Of course, in QCD, you know that there are no uh, massless uh, quarks as we uh, anticipated at the beginning. And so the only way that an extra fla massless flavor can be introduced in the theory is if you manage to make it condensate at the scale, which is much higher than the QCD scale, okay? This is the whole point. If you manage to do this, then at low energy, uh, you don't have any extra degree of freedom. And the only uh, object which survives is the, uh, the pseudonambu Goldstone boson for the axial symmetry breaking, which is uh, our uh, composite axiom. So this is a composite axiom model. And in this holographic theory, the fact that you can condensate this extra flavor at such a high scale, which basically is this uh, the, the scale of, uh, dictated by the axiom decay constant, which again, uh, from phenomenology, you expect it to be uh, 10 to the 10 GV of, with the uh, order of magnitude. So in the, in the holographic model, you can do this because this, uh, the position here on the circle of the end point of the D8 brain is basically a free parameter. So you can crank up, you can crack, crank this, this distance L of the two end points such that this, the position in UPQ where the brain join is much larger than U0. And U0 is basically, as I told you, the dynamical generated scale, so lambda QCD, while U, UPQ sets the scale of FA. So you, this is a, uh, FA is a parameter, you can, uh, uh, free parameter basically almost. So you can uh, make it very large, much larger than lambda QCD. And this corresponds 
to condensing this extra flavor at a high scale. Okay, so let me just mention that uh, in this paper by Antonian um, Harvey, Kutas, or and Jensen, it was argued that uh, if you could extrapolate the mod, this holographic model at weak, at weak coupling, the condensation of this extra flavor, flavor would be driven by uh, non-local uh, um, quartic nambujanoidal zinio like term. Okay. So this is uh, the basic construction. It's very simple, as you can see. Uh, so you can introduce uh, uh, an axion uh, model, composite axion uh, in the Sakai Sugimoto model. And let's go and see um, first, as a first thing, if you reproduce the low energy physics that you expect. Okay. Now, as a customary in, this, uh, in the holographic models, and it's a nice feature of the holographic models, uh, the low energy act action, low energy effective Lagrangian is not just postulated based on uh, symmetry reason, but can be actually derived, uh, calculated by starting from the supergravity uh, Lagrangians, effective Lagrangians. So you need uh, the uh, DBI action for uh, the D8 brains, which describe this NF QCD quarks which I call QCD D8 brains, together with the uh, uh, mass uh, uh, term, which is given by this worship instantons. Then you need to add uh, the, DA, the DBI action for this extra flavor brain, the Pache Queen, let's say, brain, without the mass term, okay? I will denote with the Carly A and Carly F, the gauge fields on the D8 brains. And uh, I need this, this notation because whenever you add uh, uh, the eight brains in this uh, uh, background, uh, the uh, Bianca identity for F2 are violated with a term which is proportional to the, gauge, to the field strength uh, uh, on the, of the gauge field on the work volume of the D8 brains. Such that uh, F2 contains not only the theta term, because remember that C1, the flux of C1 is connected to the theta parameter. <clears throat> so F2 does, contains uh, uh, the theta parameter, but also the eta prime and the axion particle. The eta prime from the gauge field uh, on the QCD D8 brains, and the axion from uh, the gauge field on the extra Pachequin uh, flavor brain. So <clears throat> in the, your low energy uh, Lagrangian, you will have to include uh, the term uh, uh, for uh, F2 in the type 2A supergravity action. And these terms, uh, when you reduce them at low energy in four dimension, gives you, uh, give you uh, this expression here, which in a, in a sentence is the axion extended chiral Lagrangian with the addition of this current term. It is precisely the Lagrangian that, that you would have written down based on symmetry consideration and that people already uh, consider in the literature. Okay. Of course, in the holographic model, all the coefficients, well, you have two advantages. One is that you actually derive this Lagrangian. And the second one is that all the coefficients are fixed in terms of the few parameters of the model, which are this one that I report here. Okay. So let me just uh, uh, tell you what are the, the various terms in this Lagrangian. The U here is, uh, as usual, is the pi nu matrix with the, uh, the eta prime is given in terms of the gauge field on the QCD D8 brains. A is the axion is given in terms of the gauge field on the Peche queen D8 brain. This is the mass term coming from this worship instantons. C is a parameter which is uh, ultimately connected to the uh, QCD chiral condensator. Chi here is the topological susceptibility. And this last term in the second line is uh, the, just the skirm term, which allows you to describe the baryons in the model, in the nucleons in particular, as the solitons of uh, uh, the uh, pion matrix, okay? So, so far so good. You, have, you obtain uh, the uh, low energy physics that you expect. And the next step is uh, uh, to go on and uh, uh, try to calculate the couplings of this uh, axion with matter, uh, because they're important for the detection of this, uh, of the particle, okay? 
So among Mongols, the, the most important couplings are uh, uh, the one with the photons uh, and uh, couplings with the math with the nucleons. Uh, I will not uh, talk about the couplings with the photons because this uh, in this model are trivial. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, a model which fall in the uh, KSVZ class. So the ultraviolet uh, uh, contribution to the couplings is typically uh, zero. Um, so I will concentrate in a particular uh, uh, class of couplings with the axion with the nucleons, which are the CP odd non-derivative uh, couplings. The one in blue here, C bar N. So the, I will consider this term A, uh, the axion with the nucleons, capital N is proton and neutron. Okay. Why uh, am I interested in this uh, coupling? Well, for the first thing is that these couplings are not very easy to extract with other methods. So holography is, uh, comes in handy in the, in the given estimate of this coupling. The second reason is that these coupling uh, are uh, interesting because uh, um, the axion uh, at the end of the day in this uh, invisible axion scenario is a very light particle uh, which uh, interacts, as you can see here from the Carrel Lagrangia in a way which is quite similar to the pions. And so it can mediate long range forces between the macroscopic bodies, even if the coupling is very small uh, in principle, uh, is, uh, is you can uh, uh, measure uh, forces be, uh, among the macroscopic bodies. And uh, um, in this type of forces, the, the signal that you get from this uh, CPO, the non-derivative couplings, has a particular uh, experimental advantages over uh, the other types of couplings. So these are important, these type of couplings are important for this reason. In fact, there are uh, uh, experiments going on trying to detect this uh, force, this deviation from Newton's uh, law for, with uh, um, torque pendulums, for example. Okay. So this is the goal, calculating this CPO uh, interaction of the uh, axion. Uh, what is the ori the, their origin? Um, I will be interested in the, in the um, contribution of the strong sector to this, uh, to this type of couplings. And this contribution can be the dominant one in the case where the uh, Peche queen mechanism is not perfect, let's say. So up to now, I just discussed the fact that uh, if the Peche queen mechanism works perfectly, uh, the web of the uh, axion precisely can sell uh, the theta term. But in the microscopic theory, they can, there can be uh, other uh, uh, interaction breaking explicitly the Pechequin symmetry. Of course, it must, they must, be, they must uh, break the, the symmetry by a very small amount because the theta term, uh, the resulting theta term, residual theta term must be very small, smaller than 10 to the minus 10. But if this happens, again, um, the, the web of the uh, axion does not cancel completely a theta term, so you have a effectively a residual small theta term. It can be, it, it's small, smaller than 10 to the minus 10, but can give the leading contribution to this type of coupling. So I'm just considering this scenario, okay? There are a number of ways to, to estimate this, uh, these couplings. I will sketch the, the one which is uh, the most simple one, the most direct one. So let me consider just two flavors and let's rotate the theta dependence uh, in the mass matrix here uh, with the chiral rotation. You can rotate the theta dependence from the topological terms into the mass matrix here. So it appears in this combination. And then uh, as typical in the studies of the uh, low energy interaction of the axion, uh, you consider the axion uh, uh, as an external field since its interaction are very small because FA is very large. And so basically here you can trade the theta term for the axion. Okay, so it appears here. Then the next move is to place this uh, mass term on shell uh, on the nucleon states. Okay, you can describe the nucleon states as I said, the, typically by the skirm term in the holographic picture uh, it was pointed out in a series of nice paper that uh, the baryons uh, are uh, uh, instantons 
of the uh, work volume theory of the G8 brains. They are actually very similar to the um, ordinary instantons in four dimensions. The four dimensions are the three Minkowski spatial directions and the radius. And this object uh, in the four Minkowski direction behaves as a point particle that is your uh, an, uh, variant. And you have explicit solution for the variant. Here I just reported uh, the, the, the explicit solution uh, for the nuclei. Okay. So you can put this term on shell and then you expand it uh, in, uh, in, in powers of uh, the axions. And you just read from this expansion the couplings, the coefficient, which are just the, the couplings of the axion with the nucleons. Okay. This way you, you obtain an, an explicit form of these couplings in terms of the uh, coefficients uh, of the parameters of the holographic theory. Uh, I'm not going to write it down for you, this, this form of the couplings, because I want to write the couplings uh, in two equivalent uh, uh, but more general ways. They are these two reported in these slides. So these are the uh, couplings of the axion with the proton and the neutron. <clears throat> From the mixing of the axion with the uh, eta prime and the pion, that you can read from this term, you immediately realize that you can re uh, write these couplings in terms of the couplings of the eta prime and the pion with the nucleons. So in this first uh, formula here, I wrote the couplings in this way. But you can do uh, even better, you can express these couplings in terms of this other quantity, sigma, epsilon, and delta m. What are these quantities? Sigma is the sigma pi n is the pi on nucleus sigma term, which is basically the quark mass contribution to the mass of the nucleons. Epsilon uh, is uh, the quark mass difference, basically. And delta M is the strong contribution to the difference of the masses of the neutron and the proton, okay? So a few comments uh, are in order. Uh, this, uh, relay, these forms of the coupling, you can write down just by studying the, the holographic model, but you immediately realize, well, immediately, you can realize that uh, you can write this coupling in this form just by looking at the chiral Lagrangian. So these are results which are true beyond the holography, they are true in uh, chiral perturbation theory. This is the reason why I show them. In fact, the leading term in these expressions of the coupling, this leading term in terms of the sigma term, was already present in the seminal paper by Moody and Wilczek, Wilczek from 84, which was the first paper pointing out the importance, the experimental uh, uh, importance of this, uh, this CPO, the non-derivative interactions, okay. We added this uh, uh, term proportional to delta M, which uh, discriminate the couplings of the proton with, and uh, the neutron with the axon, okay? And then uh, another comment is that uh, once you have this form of the coupling, uh, you can use the, uh, it uh, to evaluate numerically the coupling, uh, even forgetting about holography and plugging in this formula, the uh, value for these quantities that you can get in uh, other ways. Okay, so let me play this game of uh, putting in the numbers in this table. Uh, the, the value of this table for the couplings are expressed uh, in uh, MeV times eta over FA. Okay, so in the third column, this one holo axiom, uh, I reported the value, the numerical value of the coupling, which you can get from the holographic model when uh, the parameter of the holographic models uh, are uh, uh, chosen as uh, the standard uh, uh, way they are chosen in the Sakai Sugimoto model. So uh, the uh, values which allow you to fit uh, the uh, pi on decay constant and the mass of the raw meson. Okay, so, so uh, you get this precisely this value. In the first two columns instead, I use uh, this uh, second form of the of the couplings by plugging in the uh, pi on nu nucleon sigma term and delta m uh, from uh, other sources. The delta m is actually calculated reliably from the lattice apparently. So you can use it, uh, th that value with safe. Uh, 
The pionucleus sigma term, uh, there are two possible sources for this uh, quantity. One is from the lattice, and the other one uh, is uh, from an uh, experiment by using some low energy theorems. So you look at the data of uh, pionucleus uh, low energy scatterings or uh, pionic atoms, and you can extract this coupling. The problem is that these two evaluation of the sigma term have a large disagreement, uh, around 50%. So you cannot do actually precision physics in this sector. Uh, and so I reported here in these two columns, the two va the, the values that you get uh, by using employing this uh, sigma term, either from the lattice or from phenomenology. You can uh, appreciate uh, the difference here in the values. And you can also appreciate the uh, difference in the uh, coupling of the, with the proton and coupling with the nu nu uh, neutron of the axion. <clears throat> so two observations here are in order. The first one is that uh, curiously the holographic uh, value is somehow in between these two values of uh, these, uh, these couplings. And the second observation is that uh, um, precisely the same derivation that uh, I show you, I sketched for you here uh, for the holographic model can be done in the skirm model directly. So, and you can then plug in the numbers uh, that uh, the value of the parameter of the skirm model which fit, uh, which fit better uh, best uh, the data and get uh, these uh, values for the couplings which are a bit higher of the other estimates. Uh, so the, the, the bottom line is that you cannot do precision physics in this sector, but uh, um, you have, a, uh, in my opinion, a, a pretty clear idea of what is uh, the ballpark of these uh, this couplings from, this, uh, um, from these evaluations. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm basically done for the, with the low energy physics. I will move now to... Um, the, the confined phase and the, uh, the gravitational wave spectra. But uh, so if you have uh, any questions here, uh, it's a good moment to pause a bit for the questions. Okay, so if there are no questions, let me um, uh, go uh, and uh, talk about the, the confined phase. So in the holographic model, uh, you can describe the, the, the easiest way actually to describe the holographic model is to go back to this, uh, the metric and perform uh, uh, a double week rotation in the Euclidean time circle and uh, this uh, ec uh, extra circle X4. This double week rotation brings you to a different metric with the same asymptotic, which describe uh, uh, the confined phase of your theory. And in this uh, other metric, uh, this uh, cigar is replaced by a cylinder. So I depicted, sorry, I depicted it uh, here. This is the cylinder. So you have uh, an, uh, an horizon. The QCD brains, the one uh, uh, supporting the quarks degrees of freedom, fall in directly into the horizon. This realizes current symmetry uh, restoration, the Sakai Sugimoto model. And uh, of course, it's the, if the temperature is uh, smaller than the scale dictated by the axon decay constant, uh, this other uh, brain stays connected. That is, you still have the axon in the, the confined phase if, uh, until the temperature is not at the Pechenko scale. Okay, and so you can study the physics of the axon at finite temperature. <clears throat> you immediately realize that uh, in this phase, uh, the CP breaking interaction, the effect of the theta terms are uh, um, not present at leading order in NC. And this is a, a consequence of the planar limit that you're studying uh, with this uh, holographic model. Uh, and in fact, the main uh, eff effects uh, of the theta term come from instantons. Um, instantons so are exponentially suppressed. Instantons in this uh, holographic picture are just a Euclidean D-brain wrapped on this circle, Euclidean D0 brain. You can realize it just by writing down the, the action for the D0 brain, which is in the, on the background, it gives you precisely the uh, action for uh, an instanton. Okay. 
So if you want to study CP breaking effects, you have to study uh, actually instantons, D0 instantons in this beta. Luckily, although these are exponentially suppressed, you can do this, uh, this uh, study relying on some uh, uh, very nice results back in the day by this uh, uh, gentleman who worked out uh, this uh, uh, correction, higher order correction to the type 2a uh, action on a circle uh, just by studying M theory on a torus. So this is higher order correction. So it's proportional to the fourth power of the value tensor. Actually on shell, this, uh, this first part with this uh, coefficient uh, here, it was already used by Gabser, Klebanov and Cycling in order to study the correction uh, to the free energy of Witten's model, okay? But on top of this constant term, you also have uh, here a modular form which includes uh, uh, instantonic correction. So here I wrote the one instanton correction, but it's a complete series of corrections. And this sort of parameter is basically uh, proportional to the uh, D0 action. So it contains the theta dependence, okay? So you can plug this uh, on shell on your background and you have automatically the uh, free energy dependence on the theta parameter, okay? This uh, F theta. And by taking two derivatives, you have uh, immediately the topological susceptibility of Witten's model, which is reported in this formula, okay? So let me uh, clarify here, I'm just considering uh, the model without flavors, so the, the leading contribution to the topological susceptibility, okay? So from a theoretical point of view, it's nice that you can study these exponentially suppressed terms in, a, in a NC. Uh, what about phenomenology, okay? The, from the uh, topological susceptibility, you can extract uh, the mass uh, uh, of the axion because uh, the axion follows the witten veneziano formula, so its mass is given by square is given by the topological susceptibility over the square of uh, the um, action decay constant. And uh, this temperature dependence of the uh, action uh, mass is a crucial parameter because uh, it uh, allows you to determine the abundance of axions uh, uh, as a component of dark matter. Uh, so it's a crucial parameter to study action cosmology actually. And so people are very interested in this quantity. Uh, unfortunately, this holographic uh, background that we consider the standard one considering the Witten uh, model uh, gives you a temperature dependence of the axion mass, which is increasing with the temperature, as you can see, which is a completely opposite, qualitatively opposite uh, of the behavior that you expect in QCD that you find out in the dilute gas, instanton gas approximation of high temperature QCD and uh, people found out uh, in, on the lattice. So although this could be of uh, some theoretical interest for the phenological reason purposes, uh, it's a, a useless result. The discrepancy comes out because in this model, in this background, we consider this uh, the ground as a the, uh, model for the confined phase of the theory, the coupling is actually a constant. You don't have any asymptotic freedom. And um, it is asymptotic freedom, for example, that uh, in the standard dilute gas approximation converts this uh, increasing behavior to a decreasing behavior with the temperature, okay? So the message is that uh, while uh, in the, conf the confined phase with the background is, the, is believed to be in the same universality class of Jan Mills, in the deconfined phase, it describes uh, a different uh, type of theory. Okay. Aldo, yes. I think there is another reason why this is coming out wrong. This is because it's computed in the wrong phase. Uh, how do you mean? I mean that the correct, the confined phase in the Witten model is not the black hole that everybody's using because that doesn't have the correct breaking of center symmetry, but yeah. it's a black hole that nobody has found so far because it is depending on the angle theta. Yes, yeah, you, you refer to the Mandal-Morita uh, construction, right? Yes. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, um, 
uh, it was argued that uh, this background, which is the simplest one that you can consider, that uh, we also consider as a proof of concept, uh, has a different uh, symmetry pattern with respect to uh, uh, the deconfined phase of uh, YAMIS and GCD. That's correct. So this is not uh, in the, this background, uh, again, doesn't reproduce uh, uh, the correct physics uh, of uh, the deconfined phase of YAMIS. Uh, it's true. And uh, as you say, it's only also true that uh, the correct deconfined background, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, there is an attempt of constructing it, uh, but it's a, a partial result. So we cannot use it uh, yet to uh, estimate it, uh, the topological susceptibility uh, in analogous way as we have done it uh, here. So that's important. I mean, you can, uh, there you can uh, argue that the instantons are picked at a certain uh, size, which means a certain radial position in the background, uh, but you cannot uh, do a full-fledged calculation of the topological susceptibility, unfortunately. Okay. <clears throat> um, last comment about this part in this part is uh, comes from the fact that uh, um, you can actually do a very similar computation starting instead of from type 2a in type 2b there are similar formulas in type 2b uh, for the d instantons and a higher derivative correction but in the same way as here we uh, worked out the topological susceptibility for witness model you can work out the topological susceptibility of n equal force to a mills in the confined phase which is reported here it was a it is a result which was not present in the literature uh, before so it's a, a theoretical uh, uh, interest. Okay, <clears throat> uh, if you don't have uh, any further question on this part, let me just conclude uh, with a couple observations on uh, some uh, ongoing work um, on the calculation of gravitational waves. Uh, it all starts from the observation that the Pechenkin transition in this model is a uh, first order. The Pechenkin transition, I mean uh, the transition in between the phase, uh, the, in the deconfined phase between the connected uh, configuration for the brain, the, the supporting the axion, which the, the, it's the configuration that we have been talking about up to now, and the uh, configuration in which instead the, the, the D brain and uh, anti D brain are disconnected and fall separately into the horizon. So it's chiral symmetry restored phase. The transition is first order because you have two competing uh, uh, configuration and uh, it happens uh, by varying the temperature. So when you increase the temperature, you melt basically the axion in the plasma. Well, if you look at this uh, um, phase transition the opposite way, so you think about uh, your universe starting in the hot phase, so in the chiral uh, uh, symmetric phase, and you, the universe expands, uh, the temperature is lower down, and it goes beyond, below, sorry, the, the, the temperature for this phase to happen, to this uh, phase transition to happen. So the universe is trapped in a false vacuum. And uh, so it starts nucleating bubbles of true vacuum, okay? Uh, the bubbles expand, they collide, and uh, percolate and basically at the end of the day you find the universe uh, is uh, found to be in the uh, true vacuum of your theory, okay? Uh, but the dynamics of the bubble, uh, specifically their collisions and uh, their interaction with the plasma of uh, let's say standard model particles can generate gravitational waves, stochastic background of gravitational waves uh, either again from collisions or from uh, exciting sound modes or turbulence in the plasma. Okay, this is a very standard uh, uh, topic in uh, whenever you have a, a cosmological first order transition. And the observation is uh, here is that we have a first order uh, transition. The Pechenkin transition in this model is first order. And uh, there are also plenty of first order transition actually in holography, actually. Um, it's a kind of the standard uh, uh, thing that happens in holography. Uh, 
And so you can go on and uh, try and calculate the gravitational wave spectra, which are generated, for example, in this patch shaping transition and see if uh, it can be uh, detected in your uh, present or future experiments. Okay. My last slide gives an example about the spectra. Uh, actually, in an easier example, it's not this trans Pechequin transition. Uh, we are worked out uh, first the easier case in which the phase transition that we consider is the confinement, the confinement transition in Witten's model or, QCD or uh, Sakai Sugimoto model for that matters. Uh, so uh, we um, have in mind the scenario where uh, we have a dark sector. Uh, the dark sector is uh, typically uh, of uh, young males or QCD-like in many cases. And um, in many cases, it can be modeled by uh, strongly coupled young males or QCD theory, okay? Where the dark matter is given, uh, for example, by glue, dark gluons or dark baryons or even dark ions and so on. Okay, so this is a completely standard uh, type of models. And here we are uh, assuming that uh, the gauge, uh, the rank of the gauge group is uh, uh, sufficiently large such that the theory admits a holographic description. So, and you have a sufficient number of degrees of freedom such that the theory admits holographic description. In this case, the Witten, Witten's model or Sakai Sugimoto model are a perfectly good candidates to model this strongly interacting dark, dark sector in a reliable way, okay? So it's not, in that case, it's not an effective theory. In principle, uh, Witten's model could be a uh, model, uh, uh, reliable model for uh, to model a dark sector. Well, if this is the case, you can use this model to calculate the spectra of gravitational waves because uh, in this type of theory, you will have a, a confinement, the confinement transition, okay? Turns out that you can do this. Um, and here I present, a, uh, I just show you a preliminary result with uh, some particular choice of parameters. Uh, the spectrum here of gravitational wave in, as a function of frequency is given by this black line, okay? And the cyan region instead is the spect sensitivity of LISA experiment. So you can see, you can find uh, regimes of parameter where uh, uh, the signal uh, in, uh, of gravitational waves producing this uh, transition can fall in the sensitivity of future uh, uh, experiments on gravitational waves. Okay. Uh, the comment here is that uh, um, this is interesting, of, of course, uh, the comment here is that uh, one issue is to find, uh, calculate a signal which can in principle be detected a completely different issue is uh, if the, even if the signal is detected to uh, uh, be able to discriminate if the signal comes from, uh, let's say, uh, the witten yamis model or some holographic model or some other uh, model, okay? So I don't want to oversell this. Uh, clearly, uh, it's a difficult task to, even if you detect a signal of this, like this, to discriminate uh, the, uh, the true origin of the signal. But I find it anyway uh, quite uh, interesting that uh, in principle, uh, future experiments on gravitational wave could detect signals coming from, uh, uh, from theories which have a uh, uh, holographic description, which actually are in the uh, holographic regime of parameters. Okay, uh, just last uh, comment. This, uh, this plot has been generated uh, automatically uh, in by uh, some a software from the LISA Cosmology Working Group. You have to plug in just some uh, uh, quantities that you calculate in your model and uh, they automatically give you uh, this type of uh, uh, power spectra plot. Okay. Very good, that's all. I thank you all for uh, uh, your time. Okay, thank you very much. Questions, please? Uh, may I ask, uh, to which extent um, the holographic axion should be really Peche Queen axion, or it should, or it also can be uh, what is called axion-like particle, because uh, just there are tough uh, phenomenological bounds for 
yes. uh, that uh, um, uh, Petri Queen axion, although there is some room for axion like particles, which still may be just looked for in the accelerators and so on. What the, yes, what's yes. the point? Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, I mean, here uh, it is automatically, it comes up to be automatically a QCD axion, axion uh, just because uh, uh, putting the, the game this way, it is uh, really uh, automatically um, comes with automatically with a, uh, an anomaly for uh, uh, for the QCD. Okay, so uh, you can use it as a as a. Uh, <clears throat> the parameters should be really related, like for real Petri Queen, automatically or just it, it's. Or oh, it's more or less implied uh, just put as a, an extra constraint for it. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, uh, when, whenever you put the, the axion uh, in this way, okay, so you couple here, uh, you are assuming that uh, yeah, your uh, uh, background describes real QCD, okay, you are using the uh, Gamil's, uh, the, the Witten's model to model. Uh, the real Yamil uh, uh, sector, and so this uh, uh, axial anomaly is uh, is uh, the axial anomaly coupled to QCD, and so this axion uh, is really a QCD axion automatically if you include it this way. Okay, so this is uh, uh, comes out automatically, and so it will have to satisfy the uh, the constraints for a QCD uh, coming from a QCD axion. Yes. You can actually, maybe a thing that I can add, uh, if you can, uh, if you just uh, um, drop the assumption that uh, your uh, confining theory is describing real work QCD, and as I was telling in this slide, uh, you uh, consider it uh, as a hidden sector, you can model easily uh, Kaplan's model of composite axion, that is, uh, you, you uh, think uh, about your axion as a composite axion uh, with a um, compositeness is due to some uh, strong dynamics, which is not the QCD dynamics, uh, the Yamil's dynamics that are, uh, of our world. This is a totally uh, standard thing and you can do, you can model the strong sector just by uh, Witten's model. And uh, in fact, you can, uh, so it's a different model of action. You realize holographically this Kaplan model, which is just a, a slight modification of Kim's model, original Kim's model. Uh, and you can study actually the, the gravitational wave spectra in that case too. You, you also mentioned about possible mixing with uh, pi and, and eta mesons. And this is considered, uh, but this is considered more or less uh, just independently of, of, of the holographic nature. Yes, action, yes, right? uh, totally, totally, more agree, less. agree, uh, of course. In fact, uh, uh, I mean, this, uh, these relations can be, I mean, this, for example, this first uh, way of writing down the coupling just follows from Kaira Lagrangian yeah, 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 and the yeah, mixing yeah. with the finals of eta prime. Yes, totally, uh, absolutely. Okay, more questions? I guess people are tired. Okay, uh, thank you very much once again for your talk.